uh, the class is creating order and chaos because the moon is interferes. I'm Malina Smolyansky, certified instructor of Neurographica, and I offer free classes, paid courses, and you're welcome to follow me on Facebook and uh, website. And the links are always provided in the description of the course. And now I would like to talk a little bit about today's event. It's not only today, uh, because in general, uh, world is like everybody knows where it's just any time what uh, in Asia they call interesting time the challenging time would pre uh, present enough difficulties with um, world events climatic change weather pattern changes <clears throat> natural disasters since everything is they come together so it, all together it creates chaotic <clears throat> it seems like there's no pattern and chaos and that of course affects all all of us less and more or less it really depends but if we can not eliminate all this but at least we can do something with ourselves to create some safe place within ourselves just a little bit to help ourselves and those who surround us and of course, this is magnified by event. Today's event, uh, like I mentioned, the full moon and solar eclipse. We are more emotional. We are more dif difficult to deal with. And that's always... Uh, but on the other hand, uh, those celestial events that happened rarely, like, like solar eclipse, they are significant. As uh, the changes, whatever we, you do now, that will affect you probably the period of three, four months. And eclipses in general, that while they and full moon, when they're considered challenging events, they propel us towards our destiny, towards our goals. One way or the other, even if it doesn't seem like they help some events, but at the same time, one is like force us to move forward and that's create our evolution and development. There's also, uh, whether you're doing on this particular day with a full moon, doesn't matter. The world is still around us and there are also uh, things that are uh, challenges. And also, this is the period of the end of the calendar year. So fast the year passed and we are preparing like emotionally and mentally how to begin a new year, calendar year, one way or the other, whether you celebrate it or not, it still affects us because the majority of people celebrate and prepare internally. We still anticipate some change. We look forward towards futures and we want to deal with the past. And the whole vibe affects us. The entire, whatever happens in the world affects us. And that's why and I mentioned that there will be November, there will be a course, the link will be provided in this, uh, under the description of this uh, class, free class, about changes. Uh, the new course will include three independent sessions. And there is a particular one that will be offered as a bundle. You can purchase one course, uh, uh, one session, or all of three. So the the new course, the November course, called um, the course and uh, sacred geometry. It will involve sacred geometry, ancient knowledge, and neurographica. We will study the spirals as one of the main natural phenomena to to move energy. This is the most economical way to use energy. It's a spiral, the spiral. So the first session will be about spirals, how we use them in Neurographica and in general, uh, part of sacred geometry, part of Neurographica and natural phenomenon. A second one will be 
time management and timeline, which is very essential when we are approaching such an event at beginning of new year, beginning of new cycle, and beginning of new season. And uh, something, uh, session three will be something special. I haven't decided yet, and we will be like a surprise what we're going to draw. So in today's class, we'll be preparing a, a, a free introduction in what, what we call sacred geometry, something to do with drawing with precision, more precision than neurographica, using a ruler, maybe a compass, if not necessarily, but at least a ruler. We will create a pattern, a perfect pattern, almost perfect pattern. And then we apply our individual neurographic lines to make it more personal, to make it our special. So, and uh, with this, uh, Today's class, you can think about the theme. Of course, we always use a theme in neurographica. You can think about, in general, it's not it's not specific. I will uh, you can think about how to create order in your life or in specific area of your life, such as emotions or mental or uh, relationship. It's about creating order, and we will use a perfect example from nature of that order. That's a, the nautilus shell that's shaped like a perfect uh, spiral. Okay. So this, uh, now I will switch to my drawing camera. Actually, before starting, I uh, there is a very short presentation. I would like to talk a little bit more about the Nautilus shell and the meaning of it and why why it's important, why I've chosen this pattern for today. Like creating order and chaos using the Nautilus shell spiral, so called the, that um, pattern according to the golden ratio, one of those golden ratio, and elements of neurographica. So the Nautilus is a mollusk. It's a, with a light external shell. So particularly it's found, it's always considered over 500 million year old. It existed long, long time and survived until now. Unfortunately, it's almost instinct. It's found only in remote areas of the Pacific Ocean. And so, so what is so specific about it is the shell protects the vulnerable body inside. And in our classes could be considered like one, one. So in our internal lab, where we can protect ourselves. And of course, uh, this Nautilus became uh, is a symbol of nature and grace, in growth and renewal. It's also a symbol of order, as reflected in its spiral precision. And uh, this shell is a perfect representation of itself. So Nautilus shell has also became known after Jules Verne wrote the famous fictitious submarine of Captain Nemo. So that's, uh, you know, the story about Captain Nemo who built was engineering a marvel at that time, 
this novel it was a 19th century and that was considered and it was built according to uh, nautilus like properties of that uh, mollusk because it feels well the chamber the mollusk has a chambers inside and the, the organism the soft body lives in the bigger one and smaller ones are used for filling water and create buoyancy so when it needs to up it fills its chambers to descend and expels water to ascend at the surface the same, the same principle was built with a famous submarine so the remarkable shape of nautilus shell as you can see this is shell is a function of growth so if as organism matures it builds new section new chambers as up, up together together they can build about uh, up to 30 chambers okay. and the the surface is covered with mother mother of pearl and it's a beautiful shell and, and it's very fragile i had one um, and this probably was about uh, it's a marvelous you can hold it and you can imagine how it was built so i had this shell um, it was uh, partly covered but it was it was a big one it was uh, probably about less less than a foot maybe six, eight eight inches about that the size uh, supposedly they were much bigger in the past but now they're uh, smaller they have no natural really predators but unfortunately a human interference with the ocean with the coral reefs where this nautilus uh, with the animal lives and also the change of temperature and uh, water co content like um, pollution but also change, change in temperature. The shell is geometric in form and a perfect spiral. It's commonly believed that this spiral rep represents the Fibonacci numbers, but it's not true. As you can see on two sides, this is the spiral on the right, the spiral constructed according to Fibonacci numbers, which are one, one, three, five, eight. So that's how it's constructed. It's much more elongated and uh, nautilus shells are more round. And I did, I tried constructed the two of them and compare it how it be, how it was measured. But the myth exists that the nautilus shell is built according to the pattern, the golden pattern in nature, and that that golden pattern persists in nature. It's a function of a, uh, its natural number, 1.618, phi. But it, it's built according to the pattern as a natural, but the only, there's a different ratio, it's so-called meta-golden ratio, which is close to three, to four. And if you know in art, in architecture, it's built a lot of built based on that ratio, four to three, which is represented by decimals around one, one to three. So, but this nautilus shells, uh, the ratio varies between one three some kinds and only some kinds 135 so that's if you're interested but we will use one of those number 133 to build our own uh, spiral as spiral which represents the shell so that's uh, the spiral how it's built uh, fibonacci numbers but nature patterned according to this golden meta golden ratio so you have like hurricanes and um, and that we will talk about in our next class if you join about the spirals so the spirals that come from uh, plants 
to such global events as uh, hurricanes and to cosmic bodies like the galaxies. So also in, in a variety, even if it's, we think about it, oh my God. so when we think about perfection, Yes, it may be shaped according to the perfect spiral. However, due to biology, some discontinuity exists. It's due to adverse ecological conditions. Nautilus grows according to section. So that's why when we talk it is direct relation to the neurographic line. It may be economical way to draw straight lines in nature. However, those adverse biological conditions create something that the slight turns. Like if we can imagine roots that grow, they go around small particles that they can't penetrate, like around stones and around the rocks, and they embrace it. So that's a perfect example of adaptability in nature and working with the existing environment. So the neurographic line follows a very similar pattern that we are able to go around something difficult and continue our path towards our goal. So, and then with this, I will, we can start drawing. And before drawing, we need to uh, build this uh, sequence that we will use in our drawing pattern. I suggest using some number that you can um, easily uh, cal calculate. Like I will be using as a as the first unit, unit one centimeter. And we will use the ratio how to create this thing, uh, sequence one, three, three, which is close to a pattern that we know like four to three, one of very well-known format in art, like, you know, frames typically four by three and pictures. So here we have one. So, and I might multiply one by one, three, three. Okay. One, and next one, one, three, three, of course. Then I multiply, it's building, it's called it a pattern, it's a logarithmic scale. Okay. So ratio. Next, I multiply the given one, three, three, and I get one, seven, seven. So precision is, um, you know, you don't have to be precise exactly because it's so, it's not easy. We will still be drawing something close to one decimal number, not more than that. And multiply the one, Three, three, is two, three, five, again, one, 
three 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 twelve my one, multiply one three three four sixteen multiply one three three equal five five three multiply that one three three seven three six it's almost the end i i know by the size of it so so much can fit in one paper the spiral one three three nine i put nine eight and maybe the last one one three three is 13. i think there will be plenty for our exercise so that's one centimeter so So I use centimeters because it will not be easy to calculate in the inches. So that will be our scale, uh, like our numbers to build our spiral. So I'll keep this paper close. So now I will use a ruler. I will probably I use one of my golden pen. If you're drawing on the white paper, like regular paper, you can use just a pencil for uh, constructing lines. If you're not, Please use them. Um, I will use something brighter that you can see reflection. Uh, you can see on the screen. So about the middle. I will put the first dot. And then I'll, I'll measure one millimeter. One centimeter, sorry, and one down. So I, I, I draw a square. So the spiral uh, will be unfolding. So I will in this direction. So now I find this corner, low left corner. And I measure the next number. So we used pattern like one centimeter. Next one, one, three, three. And I will I measure approximately one, three, three. This way. And one, three, three, and uh, will be about one, four, of course. So, so me, uh, I will, uh, the important points that we start building is this one. So from here, we'll continue. So you do not need uh, to create a circle, but I show the circle so it's easy for you, uh, easy to see. So that would be a square. But I, I'm not so much interested in squares. I'm interested in this continuum. So. so next one, next number is 177. So and I probably measure 18. Nine, 
in this direction and one eight. Here's the point. Important. So if I go to draw some, so if I were to draw squares, they would be squares. But I'm not so much interested in squares, how this a progression. So it's like unfolding. Right? Again, I measure from now 235. Which is uh, probably two four. Okay. Two four centimeters. I can draw the line. So is, uh, these lines are not important, but they're important when if you uh, it's easy to see. And then this one becomes important, okay? So this one, two, three, five. Two, three, five. Next one, three, twelve. It is probably three, two. No, precision is, uh, we're drawing by hand. So precise, but not too precise. It's not really strictly sacred geometry. It's with elements of sacred geometry. And uh, 312. I draw the line and now this becomes next, next point. Next one, 416. I will, I'll get 4.2 centimeters. The point, one first and up angle. So, And it becomes a next point. Next one, it's five, five point five. Okay, five point five. Measure five point five. Point and five point five here. This point becomes next one, which will measure seven three six. Continue. I will put seven four, okay, seven four. It's easy, seven four. Seven four. It's almost at the end. Next one, nine, eight. So depending on your paper size and how you, you position it, you may not be able to fit it in. So luckily I, I have enough room, nine, nine, eight. OK, 
and in this direction, and I have nine eight. This point becomes important. Next one. And the last one is 13. 13, if you have enough, if you have enough room, I mean, I luckily I do have this lucky position. And 13. So this one, the end of the spiral. Of course, if you have a larger uh, sheet of paper, you can continue like endlessly. Just keep on multiplying the next number. If you want to check, you can continue by multi multiplying 13. If you're interested in checking it, 13, one, three, three again, you get 17, multiply by one, three, three, 23. So if you enter, also you can create a tidy spiral. Like for example, if you would like to uh, take a smaller proportion, you can just use uh, starting with in five centimeters, uh, half a centimeter. And that will be like tight and smaller like this. It will be tighter. So uh, the difference between tight spiral and I uh, will uh, be explaining in the course. Mm -hmm. Because there is a meaning between a tighter when it's a loose spiral and tight. So now that we constructed in now we're building the spiral itself. So, so this will be the center. Uh, please find your first square and the top one and this corner. And now if what would be diagonal, we draw first like an arch connecting the two points. Connecting the two points that you have circles that we started every time we started to draw. And I made a circle around the point. Here's another one. The next one, connecting the two with a arch. Next. So with a, sp a spiral, it's important to remember that they, they make energy. So we just, we continue. We do not go in the opposite direction. They're going in the, this is an expanding spiral. We continue with the flow expanding. So if you, if you would like to be more precision, so when I said about squares, this could be considered a square if you measure. If you have square, then you draw a circle, uh, an arc with a compass. But it has to be much, much more precision. So I'll just uh, draw it by hand now. Connecting again, expanding. You can see you can see the pattern how it's evolving.
Next one. Folding, making wider fold. Next point connecting. And that two last one. So what you can see, this is a spiral. So you can leave it in this uh, landscape format, but I, I mean, I prefer opening to have it up like this. So you can uh, decide whether you would like to have it open. Like that will be. So I position it. So in vertical, it also has a meaning and it has more energy, more attractive. And uh, it's more like a statement, so that make a small round. So this becomes our spiral and you can draw a neurographic line. outlining the spiral. And it continue. I may take it to the outside. But this is not everything. It's a, uh, as, as you remember from the drawing, And there are also chambers and so-called that separates like a transition from one stage to another. And we can draw those by using again a ruler and they all like radiate from the center. You know, there's a center. Just to draw a small lines. But when I draw this uh, radial lines that represent, they're from the center, but they do not. So this is the center. But they touch only uh, the walls. Like, you know, this is like becomes like a passage. This is like a path, the interior. Because I'm using it by side. And then now we can shape them as a well, creative. This is one of my practice drawing. So here it is. It's like a 
uh, shape. With a small pointy part in the middle. This round. I can also introduce some rounding, soften the shapes, the walls. In the middle. And also, when you're drawing this, you may think about what these chambers represent for you. There may be certain qualities. Uh, in neurographica, we call this this completes our composition, which is the drawing, the sketch that we can uh, draw. <clears throat> and the neurographic lines, I've started applying the neurographic lines and rounding. And when you start drawing it, I, I suggest that, uh, first of all, with the rules of the spiral, you always you want to draw, draw it from the center outside, so in the, in the same direction. Uh, there are spirals when you can draw from outside towards the center, but this particular spiral, we draw from, from the center to outside. And you can, if you have a wider, Mark a gold marker. You can use a gold. Yeah. This, this is the main shape. There's metallic markers and others. A bit. Uh, they have their own character. So there's outline the shape. Neurographic lines in the style. I start adding neurographic lines to my drawing and rounding at the same time. Let's check if my other mar uh, gold marker. Bit. Very nice uh, bone marker will be, but doesn't want to cooperate today.
so with metallic markers <clears throat> i i find that uh, uh gel uh, pen the metallic they work better but uh, they unfortunately they are too too thin you, you can work with precision on them so and as i outline those chambers i'm thinking i may think about qualities qualities or whatever i'm building this is like a, a growth this shell represents a growth what i would like to feel my uh, potential potential for growth or the quality experience I can round. Uh, since we're dealing with uh, some uh, difficult time, and I said interesting time. I make sure that you round more, even if it uh, creates order. But I think if, if you want to feel calmer, rounding will help more rounding So now when we can work with this drawing, uh, I often explain the neurographic lines represent our consciousness, our thoughts, those impulses that uh, 
created by our brain and expressed as lines. Of course, they are the result of our conscious thinking, con consciousness. We may not be conscious about them, but that's because it's always from subconscious mind and we have very little access to it or none at all. So, and I suggest if you, you may add those lines in, inside those chambers, thinking about qualities, thinking about events. What would you like to fill those compartments? And it could be some of the smaller, the young ones, maybe a compassion. I'm, I'm thinking for good. You, your qualities could be different. Non judgmental. I had shorter lines within the chambers, exploring their depth. Your patience. Kindness. Desire to help. And I incorporate them in the, this drawing by rounding. Ideas, new ideas. Because gratitude. Perseverance can be. Creativity. You don't need to give names, but you may even be silent. 
And it's nice to think about. Health. Continue equanimity. Peace of mind. Beauty. How much rounding it, it's up to you. It depends how you're feeling about it. If, if you feel you need more, please round as much as you need to feel comfortable. learning ability to learn and desire to learn. There's so many interesting things in the world. So well. more and then uh, a little bit more. So this is a larger line of uh, I start. See. 
I see truth, sincerity, be, be true to myself. If part. But if you so if you're drawing with uh, metallic markers, acrylic markers, please, please remember that that's easy to smudge them. They they need time to dry. So some of us I have two more. Maybe like something like big, like uh, love. Uh, and I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm ready for this yet. I mean, the human sense, it's a big, it's, it's one of the greatest feelings. But I'll probably start with something simple, like uh, more that I need, like right now is the compassion, equanimity, and the next stage will be love. So it was, it was. And I have this one, the last. Now, the last one that I have on my drawing, I would like to say have miracles. And some lines in the future. So you can see the top part of my drawing. So if you're drawing neurographic line, you can take a uh, indicate a connection with the environment with a few lines <clears throat> in outside. Indicating a connection with the environment. And as always, please observe yourself what you're experiencing during this process. I noticed that my, my throat, I need to clear my throat more often in this class. So I'm losing my voice for no reason. And so, so much that I would like to express and uh, um, most likely is coming. 
I will outline a Yes, well, for those who joined a little bit later, we were drawing the Nautilus shell that represents order, like as a pattern. It's patterned according to the ratio. Now I outline with a wide marker. And maybe it's, uh, uh, those connecting the thin partition between the chambers. To make them more, uh, uh, to stand out more. Mm -hmm. A part of the shell. And marker, when metallic marker, I guess a little bit in the grease, maybe from my fingers, it stops uh, writing. I'll outline this shell again. So this is so we're almost at the end. So if you were drawing on a paper, like a white paper, you can apply colors. Yeah, you can finish the drawing the way you like it. We're almost we're finishing our time. Time, time is up at uh, the end of the class. And uh, I just leave it to your own creativity and imagination. I don't feel like adding any, like it's such a uh, drawing. I do not feel like adding any colors right now. And if I add, I may add some no shading with a white, white colored pencil, white pencil, but no colors. I don't feel like adding any colors right now. You, it's up to you. You can add colors. You can leave it black and white or dark and white, uh, and it's up to you. So you can finish the way how you you feel right now.
So that will be our drawing. And I, I hope it created some kind of a, a balance, equanimity. Like I'm feeling a, uh, interesting. It's not like that I'm feeling specifically calm or, but it does affect in a certain way. I know that from my experience that spirals are quite uh, energizing. So if I did a few turns around it, it energized me. So uh, the lines may create a calming effect, like so it rounds, but a spiral is energizing in, in general. So like a calm energy or something similar. So I will work a little bit more on this drawing on my own. And with this, we will con conclude this class. Yeah.